Greetings, options traders. Thank you for joining us today, and a special thank you to my Patreon members for making this video possible. If you're new to options trading and would like to get some private coaching, please visit my website for details. And last but not least, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the little bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a new video. In this lesson, I'm going to share with you my SPX options trade in which I got a return of 1,120% on an annualized basis. Here's a picture of my trade, which was placed on Thursday, March 4th, 2021. The underlying is the S&P 500 index, ticker symbol SPX. Because of the recent volatility in the marketplace, I didn't feel comfortable holding my trades for too long. So in this case, I placed a semi-bearish trade with an expiration date of March 5, 2021. So notice this is a one-day trade. At the time that I placed the trade, SPX was trading around 3770 which was $49 below the previous day's close. There's been a lot of selling the last few days, and this is the reason I decided to place a semi-bearish trade. Because of the possibility of a reversal on March 5, I decided to select strike prices that were pretty far out of the money. This trade is called a credit call spread or a bear call spread and it is a bearish strategy. In order for this trade to be 100% successful, SPX must close below my short strike of 3870 by the expiration date. So the selection of the short call option is the key. I went pretty far out of the money, meaning that the strike price that I selected was about 100 points above SPX at the time. I've seen SPX move over 100 points intraday when there is a lot of volatility. So I didn't want to take any chances of the SPX going above the strike prices of my call options. Therefore, the short call strike that I selected had a probability ITM number of about 6% and a long call strike had a probability ITM of around 1.5%. 1.12%. So this was an acceptable amount of risk. When I'm doing short-term trades like this, I like to select strike prices of the short call options to have a probability ITM of 10% or less. Under trade price, we can see that my short call gave me a credit of $1.72 and my long call cost me 27 cents to purchase. So the call spread gave me a net credit of $1.45. Because this trade is a net credit trade, my maximum profit at expiration is simply my original credit of $1.45. I've got one contract, so my maximum profit at expiration is $1.45 times one contract times 100 is $145. And this is assuming, of course, that I hold the trade all the way until expiration and SPX closes below my short strike of 3870. Like all credit trades, this call spread also requires a certain amount of capital. In a non-margin account, this trade is going to require several thousand dollars. Specifically, this trade requires $4,500 in a non-margin account. That means the broker is holding $4,500 of cash in the account. This number is the difference between the two strike prices times the number of contracts times 100. I had placed this trade in a margin account, so you can see over here on the right hand side that the margin requirements are a little bit less than $4,500. dollars 
I mentioned earlier that the max profit on this trade is $145 at expiration. But what about the max loss? If SPX closes above my long strike of 3915 at expiration, this trade is going to fail completely and I'm going to lose some money. The fastest way to calculate the maximum loss at expiration is to take the difference between the two strikes and subtract the original credit. So the difference between the two strikes is $45 minus the original credit of $145 times one contract times $100, $4,355. That is the maximum loss for this trade at expiration if SPX closes above my long strike of 3915. And yes, this is a lot of money. So in order to avoid losing the max amount, I can always close my trade earlier and cut my losses. Whenever I'm trading options, I always like to have my closing order in place just in case. I live on the west coast of the United States and the markets open at 6.30 in the morning and I am never up that early. So I like to have my closing orders in place in case the market makers decide to accept my limit price. So for this trade, I decided to place a closing order of 10 cents for my short call. That means I wanted to buy back my short call option at 10 cents sometime on Friday, March 5. Because these options were so far out of the money, it was a little easier for me to just close my short call separately because that is the risky side. So I wanted to get that one out of the way. On the morning of March 5 at 8.19 in the morning Pacific Time, SPX dropped all the way down to 3738 and amazingly enough, somebody accepted my limit order to buy back my short call for 10 cents. I must admit I was really surprised that my trade filled so early in the morning. Here is an intraday chart for SPX on Friday, March 5, 2021. So my limit order filled at 8.19 a.m., which was right around here. 10 minutes later, SPX hit the low, and then we can see what happened after that. SPS took off and never went back down. So it's a really good thing that my short call was closed right here before SPX started rising again. Because as you know, call premiums rise if the price of the underlying security rises. So once SPX started rising, the price or the premium of my short call started rising as well. So it would have been extremely stressful for me to sit here all day today wondering if SPX was going to go through my strike prices. And here's another piece of good news. Once SPX started rising, I decided to put in a closing order for my long call, which had a strike price of 3915. In order to close a long call, I had to sell it to a buyer. At the time that I placed my trade, there were no buyers. I was simply trying to sell it for five cents, but nobody was interested. Until 1023, somebody accepted my price of five cents. And it's a good thing because that call option was still pretty far out of the money and eventually it just became worthless. So I was pretty happy that I was able to close my long call and recover five cents. Here's a summary of my opening trade on March 4th and my two closing trades on March 5. On March 4th, I sold to open a credit call spread and received $1.45. The next day, March 5, I bought back my short call for 10 cents. And then about two hours later, I was able to sell to close my long call and recover 5 cents. After all the commissions, my total net profit was $135.31. Using about $4,400 of 
margin, the return on my capital was 3.07% in one day or 1,120% annualized. At the end, SPX closed at 3841.94, which is still below both of my call strikes. So if I had left my options open, my entire trade would have been fine. But who wants to take those kinds of chances? I basically bought back my entire spread for five cents for one contract. That's $5. So this was a good trade. Thank you for watching.